Because you think I've forgotten you. I'm thinking you must have spent a heck of a lot of money on this lot. Oh, give over. You don't go to Canada every day of the week, do you? You never guess where I got you, though. Not in a million years. Look, I don't want no presents. I just want you to stop frittering away my money. Now, stop wittering. Close your eyes and put your oh. hands out. Come on. What the devil is it? A fur trapper's hat. You look well in that. You can wear that in the shop when you work in the bacon slice. Look, Audrey, I've been worried to death about you, you know, especially these last few days. Worried? What for? You knew where I was. Yeah, well, I thought I did, yes, but I phoned and I phoned. Nothing. I'm telling you, I nearly got to the police over there to see what the devil you were up to. Well, you must have just kept missing me. Where were you every time I rang? Well, I took our Stephen out quite a few times. I mean, the minute they said he could come out of hospital, I thought, right, fresh air, yeah. that's what he needs. Come on, Alf, you'd have done the same if it were your son. Well, that no would. Anyway, look, I rang here a time or two and you weren't in. Huh? You were down at the Rovers, I suppose, supping. And I can tell you weren't here much. I mean, the place looks a right tip. Ah, now, I'm glad you brought that up. Because while I can understand you wanting to be out there with that son of yours, even if it did oh. come as a nasty surprise to me you've got a son, and I might tell you girls not too cheerful about that either. But flaming, Nora, what about me, Audrey? Your husband, eh? I'm stuck here, I'm, I'm working the shop, I'm coming back here doing all this, and the time and the inclination to clean this place up, so don't you start moaning. No, you're right, love, I'm sorry. It is too much, the shop and the house. Yeah. Well, don't worry, I shall sort it out. I'll get in a cleaning woman. Surprise, surprise. Well, that's not much of a greeting for someone who has just flown across the Atlantic. It's the best you're going to get. Where is everyone? Are you on your own? Brian's working late. Kids are in bed. Oh, get, go and get them up. I've got these wonderful presents for No. Far. You can have them tomorrow. Alf did warn me, actually, that I uh, wasn't exactly flavour of the month around here. Gail, love. I'm sorry if I upset you. If you upset me, you put yourself in my shoes for a bit. I mean, out of the blue I get a phone call. You're at the airport, you're going off to Canada, and Alf will tell me what it's all about. So I ask Alf, and he says your mother's gone to look after your brother. Bingo. That's how I learn I've got a brother. Look, I'm sorry. I mean, I am. I'm very sorry. I mean, what else can I say? Everything. I want to know the lot, starting with why you never told me I had a brother. Love it, I was 16 when I had Stephen. I mean, in them days, you certainly didn't brag about being an unmarried mother. You could have told me. Yeah. I nearly did, once or twice. I wanted to. Then why didn't you? By the time you was old enough to understand that I was afraid to. Yes, afraid. Gail, look, you had to grow up without a dad, didn't you? Huh? I mean, I thought if I was to tell you that, well, you weren't the only mistake, well, you might get the idea that. 
I didn't want you to think I were a slag. Oh, ma'am. I wish you had told me. I wouldn't have blamed you. I wouldn't have thought you were a slag. Wouldn't you? Everyone else did. Thanks for Rachel. What are you having? Oh, I'll have a vodka and tonic, I'll thank you. Come here. Is Alan not with you? No, he's gone to Wimslow. He's selling burger alarms. Oh, gone where the money is, eh? Anyway, I heard you got your wife back today. Yes, I did. She's round at Girls Town. You know, present for the kiddies. Uh, She'll be in later, like. I thought you'd have been having a quiet night in you and Audrey. Second honeymoon, you know, eh? No, keep the change. Uh, do you want to sit down somewhere? Hey, I wouldn't mind being on my feet all day. <laughs> Oh. Your missus got back in all right, Alf? Yes. Ah, ah good. Oh, I won't ask me in case I think I'm being nosy. Oh, ah, well, I don't have to worry me, you see, <laughs> not having that sort of reputation. Mm. <laughs> all right. All right, let's have a drink. Uh, anyway, got your wife back, which is what you wanted. Oh. You don't sound so sure. Well, she's got to find a fast in that order, you know. Mm. I don't know a lot about it. I keep wondering what she's going to drop on me next. Because I was just 16, so I couldn't keep him. I wanted to. Then everybody said that would have been worse than what I'd done already by getting pregnant and having him. So you had him adopted? No, not exactly. There were this very nice couple that lived near us, Mr. and Mrs. Reed. She couldn't have children. Well, she'd lost one, I think. Anyway, uh, my dad came home this day and said uh, they wanted to take Stephen. I mean, they was willing to have him. So that was that. You gave your baby away? Well, of course, everyone said that was the right thing to do. I mean, what could I give him? But I'm telling you, a few years later, when I found out I was having you, I knew I wasn't going to give you away. I knew even if we starved in the gutter, I wasn't going to get rid of you. I know, I know. I've always loved you, you know. I know I've been such a rotten mother, but I have loved you. Ma'am, I know. Of course, when my dad came and found that I was expecting another baby, well, he hit the roof. Threw me out the house, of course. Not that I blame him. I mean, come on. There I was. Two kids and not a father to show for either of them. I mean, two. I was a right trollop. So, that's why you never met your granddad. Not that you missed much. I wish I'd have known my brother, though. Or at least seen him. You have. You, we used to go to this house sometimes, up on Richmond Road. You know, by the park. And the people there you used to call... Uncle Malcolm and Auntie Joyce. Yeah, I do remember. They had a little lad about three years older than me. Used to let me ride his tricycle. That were you, Paul? <laughs> I remember I used to follow him about the garden, everywhere he went. Anyway, they decided to emigrate, the Reeds. So they thought they'd do better in Canada. You and me went to see them off on the train to Liverpool to catch the boat. I remember that. I remember you crying. <sighs> yeah. Well, now you know why. <laughs>